Welcome to What's Left, a weekly political discussion challenging the mainstream left. I'm Eduardo Abarca with Andy Lipson and our guest, Donna, uh, Oakland Unified School District uh, high school teacher, mm -hmm. who we had on um, some episodes ago when the Oakland teachers were on strike and they were also against the closures of schools. Mm -hmm. And it has been six months since Oakland teachers settled their strike. and. Uh, we will just be sort of updating on this episode as well as what's been going on for you personally and uh, in your activism as well as just what you get the overall sense, the vibe at, in, in the Oakland Unified mm -hmm. School District, right? Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything. I just, I mean, I think it's important to hear, I really wanted Donna to talk about the reality, and it's not necessarily going to be a pretty reality per se, um, of uh, what it's like the months after the strike, not mm -hmm. just all the glory of going on strike and then if there was a kind of a letdown after the vote, but where are things at now? Um, and I think it's important for people to know that these things continue. Uh, and I wanted to hear how things are going. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so as we were saying, it's been six months since Oakland teachers settled their strike. And mm -hmm. so, Donna, how would you describe the conditions and state of teaching at your school since these events? The, at your school? And the state of you? Yeah. So, we have the new school year began, and um, it just kind of kind of started like how it usually starts, where I have like 38 kids in my class, and like roster is at the all high that I usually get in the beginning. Then you get the whole like revolving door, and um, kids come and they go, and um, I didn't realize that, I mean, I was under the impression that I have, I'm supposed to have 32 kids. Mm. Actually, I'm supposed to have 30. Hmm. And they actually put it down to 30. So that was quite impressive. Um, I mean, it's frustrating for the kids who had me, built a relationship with me for like three or four weeks, sometimes up to four weeks, and then all of a sudden they're taken out of my class. But um, they are now counselors and administrators like understand like we need to hold these class sizes um strictly right they need to be followed so i think oea um oakland education association has just they have more of a stronghold in regards to following or actually having administrators and schools follow through so right. I've seen that change, at least in class sizes. Because um, that was one of the demands of the strike, and you're seeing it followed up, followed through the following year. Yes. Yeah. And the moratorium has ended on, um, I believe it was school closures. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the school closures are, are potentially going to happen. And now we have protests going on with Board of Education. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna like back it up a little bit before I start talking about Board of Education. Yeah. For me personally now, six months from being on strike, I, I've i just returned to being a teacher, which I, I mean, that's, that's who I am. That's why I was on strike. I was a teacher on strike. But um, now that the school year has began, it's, it's, my priority, my students are my priority. I made the, de the decision when I was on strike to actually not attend Board of Education meetings. And I know people might be very upset to hear that or to know that that was my choice, but it was like self-care because mm -hmm. maybe it's my personality, maybe, I mean, I know for a fact that it's the environment of Board of Education that I just could not handle. Mm -hmm. My goal eventually is to support getting the Board of Education members currently that are the Board of Education members out for 2020. So I am a huge advocate to not have those who are sitting on the board now mm -hmm. to continue if possible. And that that's like my, you know, that's my goal for the long run of things, but that's nothing I can do at this very moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sort of stepping away from that. And um, me coming from San Francisco, commuting, my, my personal life would have taken more of a toll if I decided to 
attend these board of education um, protests and um, you mean the current ones going on yeah, yeah. i'm actually going to remove this right now because it's vibrating <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah the current ones that are let me continue on the current board of education meetings that are occurring i just even the more so i can't handle them because um it's it's kaiser um i believe kaiser is kaiser elementary kaiser elementary yeah sorry because i i've had kids come from kaiser and i'm like oh my gosh is it a middle or elementary i didn't grow up in yeah. oakland i grew up here in san francisco and yeah so i was like oh no i can't remember but um i did over here and i was quite proud of my kids because i actually spoke about her last time um she is my student that came from kaiser elementary and someone was telling me that kaiser parents are one of the most militant parents was it you <laughs> uh, it wasn't me it wasn't me oh, but, okay but we should back that up a little bit because that's that's one of the schools that's that's being being closed um yeah it's going to be merging and i mean just the idea of just the idea of a school closure it really really hurts the community and to claim that oh we're under enrolled and all of this like I understand what they're trying to do, but the way that they always do this is not framed to help anyone. It's mm -hmm. not framed. I don't know the the way that it's always framed is is just this like we're just gonna scoot you around and we're gonna claim that we're gonna help you and we don't follow through. Right. Well, one of the things that I mean, one of the big issues when the contract was being talked about for being ratified from the tentative agreement was that this question of school closures it was just a temporary moratorium that it was going to only go until August. And there was a concern that once that moratorium ended, the Board of Ed would start. I think that has proven true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What of those things from the previous contract that has been, because what you said was class size has gotten better. Um, what are the things that have kind of been gains? And then I want to get to the, the school closures. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that they are following through with class sizes is definitely an improvement. Mm -hmm. um, the stronghold that I mentioned about OEA actually, I guess, like stepping up or just knowing that, okay, they exist and, and I can go to them and I can look to them and um, they, they have more of a presence, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely been a gain for a lot of, a lot of us who were on strike because it just it builds more confidence in oh we have a voice and we can use it and you know the there have been times where it's it's frustrating because of course you'll have teachers who are like well the union says this and the union says that and and they'll kind of use it to their advantage i've already seen that in the past i've seen that um the past three years that i've been working um in oakland and you know now just seeing that their presence has become more of like we are going to help you in a bigger picture not just like an individualized yeah. like hey for your situation this is what we can do it's like a bigger picture which mm -hmm. i really appreciate mm -hmm. because we all get the same paycheck like i mean not saying that we all get the same, you know what i right. mean we all get we all get paid by ousd they're supposed to be um helping us advocate um within the district and, and navigating through that. So I really appreciate the bigger picture that they have been pushing for um, for the schools and for teachers mm. overall. Um, I think also, so I'm not necessarily talking about like the tentative agreement. I'm actually talking more of like the nitty gritty like within that we ended up having surface. So definitely our, um, the realization of like, oh, teachers versus, and I don't mean versus as in like fight, I mean more like our unions are all separated. Like we knew that logically, like of course that that's what's going on. We knew that that, that was the case. Like admin and principals, like supposedly there's like a principals union, yeah. but it's this idea of like fractured little groups and then all of a sudden we're all working in the same place and we all have different rights and like, mm -hmm. you know, the, our custodians have um different rights a different union our paraeducators have a different union and it, it created a lot of tension and i, this is I after the strike 
Or, I mean, within and after. Yeah, and I okay. think that was one of the more frustrating parts of, of coming back. You know, that really surfaced of like, we are separate. Like it, I don't, I mean, we, we have different jobs, of course, but it, it was just this feeling of like, oh, we're, we're very different. Like, because we fought for this strike and then you kind of were like on the other side. Like it wasn't fair for our paraeducators. It wasn't fair for like certain people who were completely for what we were fighting for, but then they wouldn't, they wouldn't have gotten, they, they don't get a raise, right. you know? And we are, I don't like using this, but I, this is a reality. We're inconveniencing a lot of, a lot of people. We inconvenienced our kids. We conven we inconvenienced the parent or guardians. And, and like people would be like, you're selfish, but no, I mean, the only reason why I went on strike was like for the kids. And I know the paraeducators feel the same way. I know that a lot of the staff that are outside of the classrooms feel the same way. Mm -hmm. It's just that it was, it was our union that went on strike. Mm -hmm. Even though we all fought, like we are always there for the kids, not fought, excuse me, but we're always there for our students. Like that's the whole point we're here. So I felt that like separation, that fractured feeling of like, we're, we're all working in the same, the same school, but yet it's like, we're not allowed to fight for the same things because we had different unions. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what surfaced. Um, it just, it's so, it's so frustrating personally for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You were um, part of the minority of the people who voted no on the tentative agreement that was approved. And uh, do you uh, recall as major reasons for doing that? So I truly believed that when you are doing something for X amount of days, you can really see flaws. And when you see the flaws and you're like open about it, <laughs> you can actually get better. Like you will. And I'm not saying like perfect it, but you will work on making it better. And so maybe it's me being like optimistic and like hoping that um, if we just, if, if we could have continued, it would have gotten better, you know, and, and mm -hmm. we wouldn't, we won't know. Um, but it, it was just, I, I really thought that if we continued, we could have gotten more hmm. and we would have like just banded more and saw where those gaps were. Like, I know it was mostly elementary and middle that were really struggling, especially elementary. Like it's, you understand that tiny kids, I mean, I say tiny cause like high school mm -hmm. students like are very tall, <laughs> <laughs> especially when I'm like, Oh, I'm looking up at you mm -hmm. and, and they're independent. Like they just, I was offering them, I'm like, do you want to go climbing? Do you want to do things? Like, do you, you know, just kind of putting it out there on my Instagram and social media, like this is what y'all can do. And, and they were fine, you know, but then I think about the elementary school kids and, and the parents or guardians that just don't know what to do with their tiny children. Like I totally understand. And again, maybe it's me being optimistic of like, we could have helped them. You know, I just, I was, I was just really, I was in that mode of like, we will make this better. Mm -hmm. We will, again, I don't like using the word perfect, but it's like, you know, attempt to perfect right. what it looks like to be on strike and support our, um, wherever there were, were gaps or issues or problems, you know? So, um, things were starting to like come up, like problem solving. I mean, that's inevitable. There's always this problem solving that you have to do in life. And in striking, it's the same thing. Like things were not working here, things were not working there. Like how can we fix that? How long have you been out? Um, seven days. Seven days, okay. So essentially you're saying you felt like you were just hitting your stride with regards to finding out what you had to do to, to get stronger as a collective union through the strike. Um, yeah. Yes. And, the, and obviously then you, could, you would feel like then there's more to be gained by holding out even longer maybe we can get farther on the school closures, maybe we can get class sizes reduced. And I think there was also, um, there was another demand that was important around nurses and things like that. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. Like that was, that was really frustrating. That like our, a, a few of my coworkers, colleagues, like just 
it was so heart-wrenching to hear when we were in um, Paramount, I believe was the theater, and just hearing this, the, the frustrations and the stories from the nurses, like, you just, you, you don't want, like, like our class sizes, yes, are, are difficult, but for our nurses, it was just, like, how is this even possible mm -hmm. that they need to take care of the, like, this amount of students? And so that situation is not necessarily that much better coming back this year. No, I don't believe, I mean, it's, it, we saw the same amount of nurses and, um, I mean, nothing, I, it, it said in, I'm really bad at the like contract, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way that it's spelled out, like uh, multiple times have, have we like gone through emails when the tenor agreement was reached that it's like, what does this look like? And like, what does this language mean? Like a lot of teachers were just getting together and like trying to figure it out before and after yeah. um, the tenor agreement was being talked about. And then it was agreed upon. Um, so we feel like the language for, um, the language for nurses still was just like, no, right. it's, not, it's not really gonna get better. And if it does, I believe it's like years later. We're like, what? Like, how right. is this? How is this okay? And it's not, it's not. Right. Again, this like fractured feeling of like, teachers are fighting for this and it's like, nurses are supposed to be included in this, right? And it was like this big question mark right. of like, are they part of, and, and I know it sounds messed up, but it's like, whoa, we didn't realize who is not part of OEA type of thing. And yeah. we're like, okay, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you mentioned school closures. Um, what, since, um, what, because it was one of the big issues that people were, the teachers were striking. And do you know if you can talk about speak to the school closures and the school board meeting that happened? So I can't speak from experience. Right. Um, but I did see footage. So I got to see it on Instagram. Um, I heard about it. I actually got an email from both OEA and OUSD and sort of like, just like always, you kind of read one and you read the other and you're just like, wow, this is, this is a mess. Um, Should I give context to what? Yes, please. It was, uh, so for our listeners and uh, viewers, the, the, there were protests mostly from the Oakland is not for sale coalition opposed um, the school board's September decision to close Kaiser Elementary School in the Hiller Highlands neighborhood and merge it with the San Kofa Academy about four miles away from Kaiser. And uh, they have been demanding that the district uh, ban school closures at least until 2022 when mm. it's op hoped more funding for school districts might be available from the state. Uh, there were barricades. The school board um, had their, um, they were going to conduct business and protesters came in with musical instruments and themselves, parents, teachers, librarians came in and uh, there was immediate this tension in the in the um, school board. This happened a week from today, today's Thursday and the 31st, happy Halloween. <laughs> and this was on Wednesday, the 23rd of October last week. Uh, so there was a clash between uh, the community and uh, district police and there was even, uh, Eliza, I know, I think there were, there were six arrested, but one parent in particular was taken to hospital and they had, uh, they're now in crutches. Uh, so that's to give some context to what we're speaking to that you're going right. to um, give us some of your uh, opinion, your, your, your own. And back and background for it, because I was surprised at the level of um, the melee that occurred between mm -hmm. the, the protesters, teachers and parents and the, and the police. Um, I was, I was actually pleased that that's like people are willing to put that sort of uh, fire on you know this situation. Um, but I was wondering if you if you what do you think of that? Were you surprised by it? And how do you explain the level of um, conflict this has gotten to? I mean, it's it is it sounds terrible because it's like. I don't expect any less of Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Like they, they're they always claiming that they don't feel safe. And, and it's interesting because, I mean, I learned this as a teacher. Like if you treat people like a certain way, they're gonna understand how you feel about them. Like, you know, the, the fact that they have this 
microphone that barely, you know, for those who are attending, you, you can't like even get like, like, let's say, right. I'm sorry. I'm like not explaining it that well, but, um, you know, if you want to speak, you're part of the audience and you go up there, the microphone's fuzzy, like you can barely hear anything. Um, and you don't know if it's cause you're standing there being like, what's going on? I can't seem to hear myself. And, and it's like, it is not crisp at all. Like, so they don't care about what the, the people who are attending even want to say, they don't care about the public. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you see the way it's all set up. They're just like the way that, that they're like higher than you. And the way that it's like half circle, it's like you're speaking to, I don't know, to royalty or something. Cause then, <laughs> then they can like cut your mic off. Mm -hmm. And, and then whenever they speak, it's like crisp and it cuts everyone else off. And you're like, what is going on? You know, why do you treat us? Like we are lower than you. Mm -hmm. And then you put barricades because you don't feel safe. But at the same time, during the seventh day of the strike, one of the board of education members chokes like a teacher. And then also one of the days of board of education, someone, one of the um, board of education members came in on crutches. And then later, like maybe two days later, there were no crutches. And they're like, <laughs> what is going Magically on? Magically healed. <laughs> yeah. Like we, I mean, gosh, like they just, you feel disrespected. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then, then, like I said, you have barricades, like you make us feel like we're animals. Mm -hmm. Like I already felt that way when I attended board of education meetings, like prior. And, you know, again, I, I didn't attend the board of education meeting that happened on the 23rd, but I mean, if anyone was to see barricades, they'd be like, really? Like you you feel like we are threatening you. Like all of the protests that happened when I was there at Board of Education was loud, not rowdy, not like I'm going to go and hurt you. Like even when my kids were there on that Monday after um, the strike was over, they never like ran at the Board of Education members. They, they just, they stood and they yelled and they were angry, but they never were like, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna hurt you. They were just like expressing themselves. It was very much like, I feel neglected and I, I'm angry. It was never this like, I'm threatening you. I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna find you. I mean, people have said things that are more like, like reflective, like how would you feel for your kid if this mm -hmm. happened. It was never this like, you know, like personal, like I'm gonna take this personally and I'm, you know, I'm gonna threaten you. It was just, the, the kids have understood that and, and they're, they're kids. And I mean, I, I don't know what happened last week. Like I can't go frame by frame or like yeah. action by action. There were families there, right? There were seven and nine year old children there. There were, uh, we had parents and librarians. A librarian was tossed over the barricade from the police, and uh, and and these families were coming with instruments, and uh, they decided to have police force. I mean, to this level, I, I think when we think about whose safety here, we're prioritizing whose safety. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like that. That's why I. That's why when I saw that, I was like, you know what? This this feels. Like, I, I really wish I, I expected more. Like, I expect them to be understanding. Like, why? Why, why do I feel that way? Maybe because I have hope yeah. that they're, like, human and that they feel and that they can, like, kind of come from the understanding of, like, we are supposed to be a community and we're supposed to take care of each other. It's like, I wish that I wouldn't think they were better than that. And so when I saw that, it it's just like frustrating and like painful to know that they sit in such high power, mm. you know, that they can do that to, to the families, that they can do that to our students, that, that, that this is what they're showing. And like, I recently got contacted. I mean, I always talk to my, to some of my alumni and it, it just, it really frustrates me that her comment to me was, this is how we learned what education looks like. That that's so sad to say that this is what our educate that this is what we grew up with. This is what we know. Like, that's not 
what education should be. That's not what education should look like, you know? When we were on strike, like whenever you mentioned the instruments, it's like, that's, that's what Oakland is. Oakland is just this amazing community that wants to, to, to protest using these different, different mediums like music and art and dance. Like that's exactly what Oakland is. They, they don't, you know, and Oakland has a, a rep. They have a, a rep for being violent. Like the reality is that they're not, they haven't been given the spaces at times to like explore other mediums. And then when they do, this is what you get. You get, oh, you're only violent. So we're gonna put up these barricades and, and put police in front of you so that we can take it out of you. It's like, no, they, they force it onto us, mm -hmm. onto our students, onto like our families. And, and they set it up so that that's what Oakland looks like. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Oakland looks like. Oakland is, is amazing. Like the music, the sports, like the love for just the grassroots. That's what Oakland is. And so I swear to you, they, they set it up to look a certain way. I guess what I would say though is I wasn't surprised at the Board of Ed. I think what I was talking about Eduardo last week was I was surprised at the willingness of the teachers and parents and the people who were there to actually push back and to actually cross the barricade. And then when the melee started, it wasn't just like, oh, police just waylaying into the crowd. There was actually a fight back. Um, and to me, that was significant. Um, I was surprised at that. I, wasn't, I was surprised that it wasn't just, oh, we'll, we'll just retreat now. Um, and to me, that's significant. It indicates a level of frustration, but also a level of, we're not going to put up with this anymore, to some extent. And I actually think that's positive. I mean, the, we've, we've had a discussion here about the, the French um, the processes from France yellow and the, the, yeah, the Yellow Vest movement. Mm -hmm. And there's a degree to which, like, I wonder if, not so much being surprised about the Board of Ed, but what would you say about the response of the protesters? Um, like, I feel like we, we've never seen anything like that in San Francisco, where we've been willing, we've, we've occupied the place and things like that, but we've never really challenged the police. We've never challenged their authority to just be, to, to stop us like that. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've had to be there already, you know, and most of the things has been pretty scripted. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not, and that, that seems different to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, the both parties are done. Like, they're done. And I, I don't know if, they're, they're just, like you said, they are coming from just a place of frustration and anger. And I mean, they did tap into how upsetting it can be when you're not being listened to. Um, they're not listening to them. Like when I received that email from um, the superintendent, Kyla Trammell, and how, you know, that she listed like, we haven't, they haven't done the Board of Education meeting in four days and this has to be done. It's like, you're not listening to your community. You're not listening to the needs of your your families that are supporting these schools. They could have easily just been like, oh, okay, close down, we're just gonna go somewhere else. Like, they, they're not, <laughs> that's not what they need. Mm -hmm. They can't just, they can't just like pick up all their stuff and be like, okay, we're done, we're just gonna like head out. Like, they, they know that this is the time. That they both, both parties knew, if anything, like both parties are getting really frustrated. So, um, I mean, I was, when I watched it, I was like, I'm proud of, of my, the, these parents and guardians. Yeah. They're not my parent, parent yeah. or guardians because they're not my students, yeah. um, kid, uh, parent or guardians. But you know, that this is what's gonna happen when you don't listen to your community. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get pushed back like physical too, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But like I said, I really feel like they have taken that out of them. They brought it out of them. And, um, you know, they, I swear that Board of Education, like, um, I'm sorry, I did forget when we had done the interview last. I can't remember if it was after. It was after. Yeah, yeah. like I, I just, it always reminds me of how the Board of Education said, oh, because, um, because of the teacher strike and the fact that they won, um, your your and they were talking to students. They were like, your programs are being right. cut. Was, like yeah. 
they just want a rise out of people and they want division. Mm -hmm. They'll always want to divide. And when I, when I heard that, like my heart dropped because this is coming from someone who has the mic, who has that crisp mic that just can, can cut through all the loud noises that are happening in that board of education community. They have that power. And, and I remember reading that exact line in, um, I think I want to say some sort of news. I, I really want to say as a chronicle, but it was just frustrating because when you read that, right, nothing else matters. Mm. Like the emotions that came from the kids, the anger that came from them at the end, like that is exactly what they wanted. They have so much control. And that's why I know with what happened, like, yes, I'm proud of those parents and guardians for what they did and families and, and teachers. Um, but my gosh, they, they have so much power to just control what is being seen. Yeah. Could you talk about the role that you know or don't know of that OEA played in the in these response to the school closures? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OEA has been really pushing to have attendees for... Um, you know, and, and basically shutting down the Board of Education meetings in regards to any school closures. So they're sending out emails, they're on social media, and they're just really, try, you know, trying to remind the teachers, like, get out there and, and keep on keep on protesting. So, I mean, they're, they're still really pushing that, and I really appreciate, mm -hmm. appreciate that. What's been the response of OUSD to what happened? Oh, OUSD is... Yeah, they like, I mean, I kind of mentioned a little bit of, they're like listing as to why they did what they did. And it's just like, okay, um, you know, I, it's still like, okay, you did that, but it's, it's not okay. Like it's not acceptable still, but you know, they tried to like put out there why they did it and, and, you know, always claiming like we're demystifying things for you in case from what you've seen or, or like heard, it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just really trying to justify what they did and, um, you know, letting us know that they asked if they needed medical attention and, you know, just trying to cover all their bases mm -hmm. and stuff, but, you know. And sound caring. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why it's really odd because personally, if you really, really cared, you know, you, you wouldn't shut down the school. Yeah. And you would actually listen yeah. to what people are trying to say. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting if we take in context as well that um, there, this is an ongoing issue for school closures. I, I had just a little figure here that I'd like to share with every. Uh, th thanks to chronic budget shortfalls, uh, shortfalls uh, Oakland Unified School District has been closing schools to save money. In the past 15 years, Oakland Unified School District has closed 18 schools, 16 of which serve predominantly black students. The students impacted by these school closures are the same ones at disproportionate risk of ending up in the juvenile justice system. Uh, we are, it seems like, funding uh, prisons mm -hmm. more than we are funding schools. Uh, there is also this uh, state law mandate that charter schools have the first chance to use any site for a charter as opposed to, right. for example, leaving the site vacant or selling the property. Uh, so when OUSD votes to shut down schools, it's really it effective effectively was to permit the further privatization of public mm -hmm. education in Oakland as the expense of, at the expense of black students and um so i I thought maybe we could uh just speak in that in in that uh, as we in, in that in that light um, I don't know if you wanted to add on to how we could potentially stop school closures at this point yeah, I mean they like I was saying, there's just so much control that Board of Education has. There's just so much control that that they have. We, 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 as in like the Oakland community, feel frustrated. We feel at a loss. Like we feel helpless. And there's, I mean, they keep claiming it's to save money. Mm -hmm. it, we don't, we don't see that at all happening. Um, we don't, a lot of us who, who talked about this during the strike and after, like, we just don't see what they're trying to, to tell us. Like, so many people who go to that podium at Board of Education meetings really are trying to make them realize that there are other ways to save money, that there are other ways that to, to go about this. And 
they just will not listen and it's just talking to a wall that's really how i feel about board of education is like they they already have an agenda mm -hmm. and like you were saying um what you had just read it's it's to privatize education a lot of the board of education members are basically paid off mm -hmm. like you look at their background and it's like charter schools and and just a lot of money in that and and we feel helpless from in 1980 to 2000 california built 23 new prisons and just one new university mm -hmm. and we so we are building prisons other than our resources of California are being funneled into this prison system that we have for our students. And Oakland is is mostly predominantly, um, the school district has predominantly um, black students. Mm -hmm. And so it's like their pipeline yes. to the prison system. Yeah. And is that true for Kaiser too? Is what, what's, the, what's the situation for Kaiser Elementary? What, how would you describe that school in terms of who it serves? I actually don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. I again I wasn't I wasn't born and raised in Oakland. I was mm -hmm. born and raised in San Francisco and I just I, I right. really can't speak to it. Well I would say the opportunity to stop the school closures across the board was missed by once the the, the, the biggest opportunity was once the tentative agreement was ratified. That's what it seems like to me. Yeah. And once I the agree. Came, right. And I would also agree that I don't think this is gonna be set like just because this melee has happened, it's not like the Board of Ed has said, okay, well, no, we're not going to close your school. They haven't made any new claims of not closing the school, correct? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, like, I mean, I just, I really feel like Board of Education is, is just set. Yeah. And, and we, like... And I, I mean, honestly, I feel the same way when, when, I mean, we can, you can go to the Board of Education to protest and, and I think that the, the level of, um, the militancy that's shown there mm -hmm. was important, but to me, to stop to stop these school closures, it's going to require again another work action, yes. a, a threat of work action, a work action that goes beyond Kaiser Elementary, um, and that's where it's like you have to bring it out again. You have to bring out the strike weapon under conditions of illegality when it's not legal to strike. But to me, those are the things that schools would once again have to do um, to then set the district back on its heels. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I mean, that's why in that email, I found it really interesting from the email from OUSD that they were like, it took, I mean, I think it was like four times, either it was the fourth time was the 23rd or prior to that, that they had closed, you know, they had shut down the Board of Education meeting. And um, I think that's really important because, I mean, it, it, it creates... It just stops it. I mean, that's exactly what striking did. It, it stops things from moving forward, and then um, it creates frustration, creates anger on both sides, and and it's just like we we need things to stay still because it's it's a split. Like right. you got this person against this person, or you know, group of people against this group of people, and and I mean. What you're hoping, what you're hoping for, is that there is a bargaining action, mm -hmm. and that that's why I'm so upset about Board of Education because they they do not care. Yeah, and it's also the basis of solidarity, which is to say, we know that they can pick off one school just acting on its own, um, but it's much harder to go after a bunch of schools mm -hmm. that are taking action, even if that action is to defend one school. Um, and my question is. Like, I do think it would require the, 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 a section of the schools, a number of the schools going out again um, and putting that threat out again. I don't hear anything like that in, even in the wind. Um, but is, well, do you see that as even a possibility? I mean, not to like try and complicate things, but yeah. I mean, the, the shutdowns, of schools because of PG and E power outages mm, mm -hmm. have been like <laughs> already frustrating. You've complicated it, Donna. Yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. No. Yeah, I think I have. Just not speak to it. Speak because it's, like, it's what's like, going on in the area. Yeah. yeah, like that has created already like a frustration. I mean, like you're 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 stopping lives. I mean the. 
same thing. It's like a strike. Like my kids were like, oh, we're so excited. There's no school. And then the reality is like later, it's like, oh, our instructional minutes are going to get tacked on to summer, which is kind of weird because we didn't do that for the strike. Yeah, yeah. But let's not. Right. But, um, you know, the, the kids are like, what's going on now? Like, you know, of course we love missing school. And it's like, whatever. But like they see the disruption as like frustrating. I mean, there are activities that we want to do and like not not like school activities. I mean, not like school like periods one to seven it's more like our dance got cut off an hour early yeah. and then it reminded me of the of protesting because when the power went out twice the kids were yelling fuck pg and e <laughs> like in unison and i was like oh like this is great but um, i was yelling with them too but no one really cares about the chaperones i was chaperoning right but you know it's like they they are voicing their opinions on things and they want to be heard you know and um like that's if, if okay when i was trying to rally my students for the strike to make them you know understand you gotta admit you gotta make it personal you have to make it where hey this is not just those people over there like this is actually you mm -hmm. you are being affected and i think that's that's what you're when you were saying like that's exactly what you were saying that they're picking off one school at a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a there's a list somewhere mm -hmm. that has all of the 13 or I think it was 13 schools, um, maybe including Roots, um, that OUSD planned to, to close. And I want to say 13, but I don't know if I'm just thinking that number randomly, but th there's a certain amount of schools on a list where they're like, we're going to close these schools someone has it mm -hmm. somewhere and um if if those schools knew you know there would be an uproar right. um but yeah like once you make it personal i i wish i wish that it could i mean and i guess the reason i'm putting it out this way is i do think it would take that kind of action because i think oakland yeah. is the, the uh, oakland unified school district and the oakland board of ed is determined to do these closures um, they were like, okay, the moratorium's over. Now we're going to start the closures. They were like trying to stick it in the union's face a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I ask if there's anything in the wind is the whole reason that Oakland struck in my mind was because there were a few schools that were willing to push this initially. And then the Oakland kind of fell in, fell in behind as some of the, it wasn't, it wasn't like OEA initiated the, the push for a strike in the first place. At mm -hmm. least that's my opinion. And I'm just wondering if there's, if you get a sense or have heard anything about some of those same schools talking about trying to do something in response to this, this thing, or maybe they're not, and maybe they're like, everyone's just kind of laying low or not considering that that's something that's going to have to be brought out. The strike weapon's going to have to be brought out again kind of thing. Yeah. Unfortunately there, from my point of view, there's, there's been nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the only talk has been. Um, 2020 Board of Education, right. some of the members are, you know, are, they're, they're going back for, um, I want to say campaigning. I'm like really bad with my words Re when I think about it. Hmm? Re-election. Yeah, election. Thank you. Yes. So they're looking at that sort of power structure instead, mm -hmm. um, which I can understand because we have talked about like when the strike was going on and like whether or not the tentative agreement was going to be yes or no we were talking about how we need to figure out new new ways of, of striking basically mm -hmm. you know and this is this is a, a way you know to sort of to take back power so I mean it, it's a slower process right mm -hmm. and we're hoping that because of the strike it'll sort of surface of like where power is and how we can take it back because mm -hmm. definitely board of education is just to me it's it is the breeding ground for currently for charter schools mm -hmm. you know like that is that's been done on purpose yeah so we really need to figure it out because it's it's also about money mm -hmm. i mean what isn't right I mean, I'm sorry, Edward, I don't know I'm talking a lot, but the reason I kind of spell this out is we've also talked about how these, the protests in Chile, mm -hmm. in Lebanon, the, the mass waves that have happened, partly because the, the attacks are across the board, everyone's going to get a WhatsApp increase around the tax or 
everyone's going to see their transit increase, their fares increase. Um, but I do believe that um, I, our labor movement is going to have to become like knee-jerk strikers. Mm -hmm. That is in the same way that people used to say, oh, are you a knee-jerk anti-imperialist? Like any war, we're going to oppose it. I think labor, labor workers in this country are going to have to become knee-jerk strikers and bosses are going to have to be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to have to be afraid, that if, if we take this step to, to get this, this school, if we take this step to get these set of workers over here, we risk everyone kind of going out when, if they do that. Um, mm -hmm. And that is a, a, we need to get back to that or we need to get there. Yeah. Um, and that is the hope uh, that I think that you know, the strike that happened in Oakland or in LA and now in Chicago, the one I hope happens in San Francisco is mm -hmm. to learn the lesson of striking and the power that we have from doing it and hopefully then get a taste for it and ta uh, get a taste for controlling it and mm -hmm. not feeling it's just going to happen when OEA says or yeah. UESF says, but that we can feel like we can do it whenever we want. Yeah. Because if we can do that, then I think we can we can set the terms much more than we are. Because you going to the Board of Ed, you don't get to set the terms. Yeah. They got the mic and they turn your mic off. Mm -hmm. um, but when you go on strike, you put your mic on and you turn their mic off. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that was something else part of the tenant agreement that I was like, what is going on? A moratorium over the summer? Like, no, what is, like, that... It, I felt like it was pointless. Yeah. You know, it was just this like, let me just throw this out there and see if they like it. Like we have something on school closures. It makes it special because we've never had it before. I'm like, this is, this is bullshit. Mm. Like, excuse me for my language, mm -hmm. but it was a BS put, put out. Like it was just, let's put something out mm -hmm. to, to sort of talk about school closures. It's like, you're going to put a wait time. That was mm -hmm. it. Like a, a time bomb ticking. Mm -hmm. Like, we wanted it to just be completely like, no. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do for those months? No one was trying to find solutions because you had the rest of the school year to finish off and then teachers are tired, right? you know? And I think that's also what's really frustrating about the strike. And like in general, it's just that like, yeah, I am, I am upset that I'm just kind of back at like the grind, but it is also true. Like you kind of want to have this feeling of like, if I get, or if, if my education or if my students like are threatened, like I want to be able to say, no, I'm going to stand up to that. And and the way that, that education is just structured, it's like kind of beats you down. Mm -hmm. You know, um, being a teacher, it, it, it beats you down a little bit um, because you work so hard. And then on top of that, it's like, okay, what, what else, you know, what else can I do? And it's like, you're already sort of tired. You know, yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's kind of structured that way, mm -hmm. which is potentially dangerous, um, you know. And that was that was something really hard for us on the on the outages was that we were still required to work, and we understood. I mean, honestly, though, as a teacher, you always you're always working. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you ask me to work. Like, for my peace of mind, like I'm I'm going to be working no matter what. Right. Um, so I the way that it's structured for you know for for teachers like. I'm so grateful that we are part of a union because mm -hmm. we go above and beyond for our students and yet we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. And it's not unusual, the GM workers recently struck oh, and, yes. st and stopped. When, and there's some things that happen now. Now GM workers are getting sped up because they need to produce more because Fiat workers and Ford workers might be going on strike. So GM is trying to stockpile parts getting them to work faster, which is the, well, the same thing they tried to do to those workers in Mexico. Um, and some of the Mexico workers refused to be sped up, and some mm -hmm. of them got fired. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also been um, attacks on GM workers who were on social media during the course of the strike, and they're being fired and things like that. So again, this is stuff that bosses do. They, they get you back to work, and they, like, they, they run you ragged um, yeah. and uh, make it difficult uh, to, to feel like you can. And that's kind of what I wanted to hear was what what your, the sense of energy or lack of energy, the sense of enthusiasm or lack of enthusiasm. Um, you've been on strike and, um, you know, I hear, I hear you basically saying that, man, that thing, the, the air left, left the tire, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I was posting on social media a lot after being like post-strike blues. Like, it's real, <laughs> like it is so. Post-strike blues. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is real. And it's, it's sad because that unity that you had with your colleagues, the unity that, 
I mean, the way that, like I was saying, the way that education is just structured, it's like, you're so independent. You're just your own little universe. Um, I mean, you are your own little planet in this like bigger universe and that's your school. And, and you just feel like you're alone again, you're isolated. And so it just goes back to that. Like it's, especially the way that the school year is structured, you know, and like, or the way that, that things worked out, I guess, um, in general, just, we, sh we went on strike, we came back, we finished the school year, we went on summer, like, we came back and, and there just, there wasn't that much unity anymore. Yeah. And um, it's tough, it's really tough, because then, you know, I gotta admit, like, just, I don't have the same feelings about OUSD. Like, how can you? How can you go back feeling like, love my school district? It's like, you beat me down, mm -hmm. <laughs> you treat my kids like crap, because <laughs> you're treating, I mean, you treat my kids like crap, in a way you're like oh it's okay if you treat me poorly but don't treat my kids like that like mm -hmm. and and that's frustrating because you're providing for the kids and yeah. Yeah. you know like you it's just it trickles it always trickles down to them and like you want to protect them like and it sucks like because it feels like you know OUSD is supposed to be like that loving parent that's taking care of you and then you got like your you know you're you're in between OUSD and the kids and it kind of feels like that's their grandparent that they should like respect. And then, you know, just, it's like a, it's like a dysfunctional family. Mm -hmm. um, you're not taking care of them, you know? And mm -hmm. it feels really weird because yeah. you just, you feel helpless again. It's just always feeling like you're helpless and you just really want to take care of like your kids. And um, you do it on your own because you just have no support. And, and you make it look like you're surviving. And I think that's what is always gonna frustrate me. You always make it look like everything's okay. Right. Right. And um, it's not, it's just really not. Because you're, you're kind of putting up a front for your kids. You're honest to them. I got high school kids, so I'm honest to them. You know, but it, it bears a weight on you every time you have to say, you know what, you can't actually, we can't replace that because we don't have the money to. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, ugh, it, like we should be provided this, but but we can't because yeah. we're not provided this. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as toner in my printer <laughs> right. cannot be given, um, and then I have to defend myself as to why I need to be reimbursed through my account right. for ceramics, specifically for ceramics, just because it's not clay and glaze. Like I'm I was just at Office Depot toner. today buying toner. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm still like, okay, I need to, need to remember to get my reimbursement form. It's like 500 other things that I still need to remember. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the system is really, I actually also forgot what the original question was. I'm sorry. Because I'm just like, the, the system is beating me down. That's all yeah. I can really remember. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it is. I don't remember the question. Oh, um, I'm talking about like the reality. Yeah, I mean, reality it's challenging to be yeah. working in school. Yeah. And maybe, because you also said like the kind of things are... That spirit is gone. Um, that, that felt like it was built. Looking back, and for those of us who hope to go on strike and and then build something beyond it, and I still think you will build something beyond it. I just think it's not just up, up and away. You had this high moment, and now things have kind of descended. Yeah. Looking back, is do you feel like there's anything that could be could have been done differently as you return to the school to kind of try to hold things together, or is that just the way it's going to go? Um, you know the. Regarding the students, I mean, I really was coming from a place where I'm like, this is for my kids. And my kids can see that in me. But um, there, was, there's, there, there was a moment in time when it was literally student versus teacher. And that- After the end of the strike? After the, after the yeah. strike. And coming back to work and, and feeling that, that separation and that like, because students were not happy that you had settled for some of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, like, they're, they're kids, like, of course. They, yeah. they don't really understand what's going on. But the reality, too, is that we didn't know what was going on either. Like, mm -hmm. let's just make it known that we didn't know what we were going to get. Like, like I mentioned how they're like, you got school closed. Like, you had something in your TA, your tentative agreement, that had something with school closures is like amazing and we're like but it it was bullshit you know right. and and like like we just never we didn't know what we were going to get in regards to our tenant agreement and and i would have totally changed that 
it's like there are some things that it's like no we're not going to do that like i don't i'm not part of the bargaining team but definitely like some of that like we just shouldn't have had mm -hmm. <laughs> like on like even as an option if that was an option no we need to continue to strike like we all should have been on the same page um as to what we were even going to get like what what we wanted and whether we were going to take it or not and to know that like i mean the whole the whole like process is terrible like i didn't know that was the process until you actually go through it. that's why i'm like great if i was to go on if i was to go on strike again like i know what to ask I know um, where I stand as to like my rights and also the rights of my students because um, talking to teachers like the reality for some of the teachers was that you know and, and mind you some of my colleagues like yes the reality and I wonder if it'll like backlash later but some of my some of my coworkers don't care about my stuff <laughs> about our students <laughs> they don't care like I mean you'll find that in all jobs like they don't actually care about their work um, whether it be teaching students or like just going to a nine to five every day and clocking out. Like mm. the reality is that some of our coworkers, some of my coworkers just didn't care and they didn't help the movement. They didn't help anything, you know, and they're just at home and um, they still got what they got. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you wish you could rally them, but that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to have the students know what what they can get out of it and to have people understand that these kids need to be heard no, like I, I i think myself and a few other teachers understood that the kids need a need a platform too like they need a platform and we don't really know what that looks like still mm. that's reality we don't know what that looks like because kids especially high school kids you know they, they have so much power but then you have them from freshman to senior sometimes i don't even receive a kid until, um, and I, re I mean receive because I don't mean as a student, I mean in the school that I work at, sometimes they, they don't have much investment because they were only there as a senior, Yeah. you know, or they were only there during the strike as a freshman and they're not there the next year. Like we're living in a constantly changing world. And so sometimes you, you just don't have the consistency mm -hmm. in, our, in our kids either. But um, to be on the same page would be lovely. You know, students and teachers all on the same page mm -hmm. know what we're going to get, know what we want and like not let the envelope get sort of pushed a little like we, we need to know what we're fighting for and mm -hmm. to stay with it instead of being like, oh, just a little bit. OK, like we'll, we'll settle. It's like, mm -hmm. no, should have all been on the same page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's going to be good for for whenever we strike again, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready to like. Hmm. You I'm, would do it again. Oh yeah, I definitely right. would. And we'll do it again, like when. Yes, yeah. I'm. I'm. If it comes to that. I'm excited and willing. Yeah. To, yeah, ready whenever, whenever, whenever it comes time. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. So maybe this this. Um, <laughs> so what I heard, what I heard was um, that almost like once once you had a, once that tentative agreement was agreed upon, there. That, in a sense, once there was a yes vote to it, it was a kind of defeat. And kind of your, what I hear you saying is there was no way of really bringing people together out of that since you didn't know what you were getting. You got, you were sold a bill of goods in some cases that wasn't what it was. They said it was good and it wasn't that good. The class size thing turned out to be, you know, kind of good. And you're kind, what I kind of hear you saying is that there kind of was no way of coming out of that together. Yeah. Okay. Like as a united front, I mean, once you have a tentative agreement, that's like yes or no. Like, yeah, I mean, we we should be voting on this. It's it's proper. Um, the whole setup was a was the whole setup was was frustrating. Yeah. Because we're talking the Sunday before we're expected to co to go back to work. Yeah. Um, and you know that that was again like OUSD just exercising their power and OEA just not really not really knowing where to go from there and. I mean, it was a rough weekend. Um, the whole setup, I think, I think it was a setup. Yeah. Like, it was a setup. It and was literally a setup. Then the question I have, because I first met you on that picket line when we when when um, when we went and visited, you know, mm -hmm. on the and when I heard that you had didn't really have union experience and you were just really this dynamic and amazing leader and you played that role throughout. 
Um, but then, of course, the strike ends, and you kind of go back to school and things like that. So I know you were chained by the strike, but then I also oh, know definitely. you were chained by the fallout from the strike as well. Yeah. So I'm wondering, looking back now, how do you feel like you've been changed for the good and for the bad um, through all this experience? Yeah. Um, I mean, I love being part of a union. Like that's that's been that's been. I mean, it's just been an ex amazing experience to be like, I've exercised my power, I protested, I felt unified with my colleagues, um, like on a united front. But it is also this like, okay, we, it's just, it's that, it's that balance between being a part of a group and then being individualized. Like there is, it's a balance, I mean, like you were saying, this high of just like being together, being united and like fighting for something that we're all very passionate about. It's a high, you know, yeah. it's like really an amazing, amazing experience that I was so blessed to just like have mm -hmm. with my colleagues. Um, and yeah, I mean, that then there was this like ultimate defeat. I mean, like I felt really defeated. Mm -hmm. It, it got me through all these emotions and, um, you just come right back down. You you feel like you're much lower than you were when you began, <laughs> you know, um, because you're full of full of hope and like yeah. full of excitement. And I still, I still have like that vigor in me and that excitement for for being part of um, part of Oakland Unified School District in the sense of like being a teacher for the kids that I love, mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, I don't have the same feelings for OUSD now. You can't really come out of it feeling. Like, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be an OUSD teacher, like I said, because of my kids. But um, there's also this like kind of disheartening feeling of like, well, this is my school district. Um, they're not perfect, but they're definitely <laughs> not doing the best that they could be. Mm -hmm. And it's really disappointing. And like I said, it's this whole like, I shouldn't expect better of them, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. they're, they're sort of, they're sort of not dead to me, but definitely like mm -hmm. on the lower end of feeling good about working for them mm -hmm. um, and having them be my support system. So um, I am love OEA, I love all the work that they're doing. Um, I, I just feel like a bit downtrodden in the sense of like my activism. Mm -hmm. I have tried to fuel like my not fuel my activism but like try and, and and start working more on leadership in skyline which that in itself is pretty pretty difficult um i'm proud though to say that we have two or, or now we have three administrators who used to be teachers mm. so that's really nice that like we're teaching at skyline for a long time so that's really that's that's really nice to mm -hmm. know but um, I mean, I, I can just be a leader now as best as I can at the school. And it's hard work, it's just really hard work because a lot of people are feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. They're just feeling, oh, they're not feeling motivated. They just want to go back to the life of like, right. I am a teacher and this is like, I have my blinders on. And um, being united is just like sort of, just mm -hmm. like thrown to the wind and, waiting on the next movement type of thing yeah. so that's that's really rough mm -hmm. so i don't think you're alone in feeling that way i know that's how we feel in san francisco the morale is the morale yeah. is low yeah. debbie downer yeah. on this yeah. point but you know i mean like i said i'm like ready if something is to happen again i'm i'm ready it's just it's hard doing it at the same time mm -hmm. um but we're taking we're taking steps to like trying to figure out new ways to, to take back that power. A little quiet, like a little more quiet, but um, you know, we're, we're still sort of like listening and waiting, kind of waiting. Any way, any way that you feel like you've been changed politically? Like in terms of your political beliefs and ideas? I mean, I've always, I've always felt, I've always felt like politically kind of like more on the radical side of things um it's been crazy just like looking at all the things going on i i can't keep up like mm -hmm. i would i just can't like i 
you know, again, being a teacher, it's like, gosh, I want to read this social media thing or I want to read about like all these things that are going on, but I like don't have the time. So I'm kind of looking at snippets. Like when y'all talked about Chile, it's like, yes, I, I know what's going on. I'm trying my best to like keep up with it. Um, and then what happened in Chicago, mm -hmm. trying to keep up with everything. I've always known that I am, I have more of like radical point of views on things. Um, but like kind of always known that about myself, mm -hmm. just nothing that I've ever done aside from striking. Cause it's like, I feel like this is my world, like type of thing. And I'm not trying to, to not be a globalist in my mindset, but I just can't help that there's so many immediate things that are within Oakland that mm -hmm. like that I'm just trying to focus on just in order to like get that in the forefront, you know, just trying to focus on my kids. Um, you know, I, I, I want to be more political, but all I can do is just really like expose mm -hmm. my kids to those types of things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, anything else you'd like us to share that we haven't touched on about this experience or where things are at for you that would be important for people who are teachers or workers or people trying to change? Yeah, I mean, I, so it's just getting those emails like after the, the Board of Education meeting on the 23rd, I was like, wow, just they, <laughs> the, I mean, I can I can send it to you via email, so you could be like, "Here's OUSD and here's OEA." Like, just looking at that, it and and being in the strike, like I think I'd mentioned it before, and I'll like mention it like from my prior interview, just that, like, the experience that people are having right now, you have to look at at um, the people who are protesting. You have to look at how they're getting the news out because, um, and I am so sorry, I'm blanking. But um, what was going on in, and I'm, again, I'm so yeah. sorry. It's just, it's been a lot of different protests that were going on. But um, whenever, whenever I've learned that um, social media has been cut off from that country due to um, the protests, it's like, that is the power that people, that the government, that whatever entity it may be that the, the people are fighting against yeah. have over and have over them. And I think that's dangerous. Just like the stories can't be heard, the stories cannot come out, the, the actual like violence that's happening cannot be seen, like that is crazy. Right. And I just want to put it out there that like, yeah, there's always going to be varying viewpoints. Gosh, you need to listen to all of them. Mm -hmm. You need to know where they're coming from because mm -hmm. um, that's what was so frustrating about the strike and I just, it keeps coming up. But when Jody London said to my students that that is the reason why we're cutting your programs so that your teachers can get more money, like, they, they control so, like, Board of Education, all the social media that, um, the larger social media, and I'm not talking about right. Instagram and all that, like, you know, I'm talking about um, news media, like, they have so much control. Like, yeah. be careful with that. Be very careful the because... the power you give the state to control that. Yeah, that's information that they're disseminating so easily, so quickly, yeah. and it's dangerous because people that are actually fighting the the power that they have and and the experience that they're having like it's being covered right like that is not that covered up basically. yeah they're being it's being covered up yeah and that's really dangerous yeah so um and they only have very few outlets for getting that their voices out and those things are being squeezed and shut down exactly so that the so the powers that be can frame the narrative or yes. not tell you that that stuff's even happening at all yes exactly like people need to critically think about what they're looking at and who's controlling what they're looking like yeah. who's controlling what they're allowed to look at and just the fact that having social media get cut off for and again I'm sorry I'm blanking on the country but um, because I just there's so it, it was a while back it wasn't recent well it's been actually happening across yes, the globe that, that's actually. also that's why that's I just, part of the election right now the whole Ru the Russia thing has been used to censor uh, social media in many different ways so this is happening in the United States. It's happening all across the country. I mean, all across the, the globe, really. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to advise everyone, just, you have to really critically think as to like where these point of views are coming from. Um, the, the actual um, outlet, the news media outlet, like resource, where's the resource coming from? Mm -hmm. The source of it matters so much. Because when I was putting out my social media, like 
there are there were very it was just it was from skyline it was it was just a different climate um i mean there were so many things going on in different locations while i was striking that um things could have been going really well at skyline and we were a really strong united front and then there were other schools that were suffering and struggling mm -hmm. and um you know we that that's why it was so interesting mm. knowing that um people didn't want to, to continue to strike because you have to look at how we were a high school and then the the high school students didn't understand that we were looking at elementary and middle schools that were, were voting um yes to a tentative agreement that was obviously very frustrating for a lot of us that were like, no, we don't want this. So, you know, it, it's just all varying points of views that have to be looked at, or right. point of views, excuse me. Yeah. Thank you again Thank for you, having Anna. me. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You shared a lot, and I really appreciate you. You said originally came and you said you didn't have much but your reality. You shared more of your insight, and I appreciate yeah. that a lot. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't expect it to be a bunch of like happy stuff, you know, and, um, but I think it's real. And I think it's something that all people who we haven't gone on strike, so we need to go, we need to go through that so we can have even the letdown that will then come as a result of that. And this is very helpful for me to hear because I do think, um, you know, we might not be prepared for the exhilaration or for the shock or the fear of, that comes up during a strike, but then there's the, the post stuff. And this is a long game for changing the world, and it's not about one strike. No, it's about yeah. it's about building more and more power among workers and the working class. In my mind, um, and this is going to be part of the process we're going to have to go through. Yeah, yep. Let me know what y'all need because <laughs> right. you supported us. And yeah, support and we uh, I, we have some work to do. So you know, right now, it's it's our work to kind of organize ourselves and build some pressure internally. Yeah. Yes, and I love. <laughs> It's funny. I'm like, I love pressuring. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because there are ways to. I mean, I love the way that we did it. Yeah, it, it was it was amazing. Just, I mean, how much everyone is struggling. You just don't say it to each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, let me know how I can help y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. This concludes our episode with Nana. Uh, Oakland Unified School District high school teacher and activist. Thank you very much Nana, for Thank joining you. us. So if our viewers and listeners can uh, want to check us out at any of our five platforms on BitChute, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, iTunes Podcasts, and YouTube. Subscribe, rate, review, and best of all, share with your family and friends and community. We'll catch you all next week. Bye-bye. Ciao.